The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us your only begotten Son to take our nature and be born of the Virgin Mary. Grant that we, having been redeemed and made your children by grace, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, everybody. The first reading is from the book of Exodus, the 13th chapter. The Lord said to Moses, consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whatever is the first to open the womb among the people of Israel, both of man and of beast, is mine. Then Moses said to the people, when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you and your fathers, and shall give it to you, you shall set apart to the Lord all that first opens the womb. All the firstborn of your animals that are males shall be the Lord's. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb, or if you will not redeem it, you shall break its neck. Every firstborn of man among your sons you shall redeem. And when in time to come your son asks you, what does this mean? You shall say to him, by a strong hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. For when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of animals. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all the males that first opened the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. Please join in responsibly reading Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is the name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. The second reading is from the book of Colossians in the third chapter. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, 
teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Here ends the readings. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter beginning at the 22nd verse. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for them according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the young and young at heart to uh, attend to our time of the children's message. Hmm. Luther Bear, Larry says he's sorry. And you're not going to forgive him. 
Larry, what's this about? Luther Bear, I see. Larry said he was going to come help you play with Legos um, two, three nights ago before Christmas, and he didn't come. Well, Larry had something he had to do with his family. Okay, Larry admits it's wrong. He didn't call you either to let you know this plan that the two of you made. May I remind you without talking to your parents? Um, what, <laughs> uh, you know, this happens. This happens and Larry's saying he's sorry. You know, I have a question for you, Luther Bear. Have you ever made any mistakes or forgotten to do something? I recall something about forgetting to take the trash out the other night. I forgave you for that, didn't I? Oh, yeah. And you know what? I forget things too. Things I was supposed to do. Or maybe by accident I might have done something that was hurtful. and Or maybe I was angry and did something that wasn't nice. And when I do that, it's not just hurting my friends, but it's hurting God as well. God asks us to love him and love our sisters and brothers in the faith and our neighbors. But do you know what? God forgives us over and over and over again. And in fact, the Apostle Paul reminds us about that. I'd like you both to face me now for this. Um, we hear him tell the Christians that if one has a complaint against another, they're supposed to forgive each other. Not just because God is telling them to, but because God has forgiven all of us through Jesus Christ. And we're supposed to share that forgiveness and love with others. Ah, we forgive each other today. All right. And that's a message for all of us who have friends and loved ones. And there may be some times we're disagreeing or have a complaint. I know the two of you do complain a lot sometimes. But we are called to forgive one another as God in Christ has forgiven us. And that's actually really good news, isn't it? In this Christmas season and always. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Merry Christmas! Yes, this is the time of year when I remind us the 12 days of Christmas are not just a song. It is a celebratory festival season in the church year. The candles are lit. Our white and gold paraments are here. We sang a Christmas carol. We're going to sing another one in the service. I don't care if the radio stations have stopped playing the Christmas music. Christmas goes on and on here. It is a season. And uh, this is one of my favorite years. Uh, as many of you know, we follow the lectionary cycle. Uh, and so uh, we use, I, I don't want to talk about what the synoptic gospels are, but suffice it to say, um, we have year A, B, and C, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And yes, we do cover John very heavily in Lent and other times of the year. But Luke, around this time at Christmas, we are blessed with today's lesson about the baby Jesus being brought to the temple and the song of celebration from Simeon and hearing about Anna 
who had who was old and waiting and lived in the temple and fasted and prayed and that she comes to praise God seeing the redemption foreshadowed already here in the baby Jesus in Luke's gospel we sense the richness of these early days of Jesus and his connection to the temple and how many who've been waiting, waiting, waiting are seeing what God is going to do for his people in the word made flesh come among us. And so this is also my time to promote that next Sunday is also a Sunday in the Christmas season. And uh, for those of us here, we will be uh, looking at Luke's uh, account of Jesus in the temple next Sunday. These are wonderful Sundays in the Christmas season when we get a glimpse into the childhood of Jesus and who he is and what he will do for God's people then and what he has done for each and every one of us here that has been washed in water in the, and the word and welcomed into God's holy family. But today I want to really lift up the power and witness of music in this season. And so I encourage you to keep singing these Christmas carols. One of the gifts of the Christmas carols is most of us know at least one verse, if not more, by heart. And it reminds me of Paul's words to encourage the Christians in Colossae that they are to be admonishing one another in all wisdom. And what comes next? Music, singing, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Uh, there was recently a study I, I heard about listening to a news report in the background uh, that people that start their Christmas music really early, I'm not sure I recommend doing that. We don't do it in church uh, after Reformation, but that's kind of what they were saying. Um, but that those folks were really happy. Yeah, because they're singing spiritual songs and remembering the great gift of Jesus Christ, who is with us all year round and not just Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, but every single day, providing light and life and hope and joy, deep joy, even in the midst of all the chaos and struggle that may go on around us, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. And so I also encourage you uh, in this year when we are going to be really looking at the accounts of our Lord's life in the Gospel of Luke, in this season of Christmas in particular, read through the very beginning. And I am going to bring up some highlights. Um, for many of us in our Bible translations, uh, the Psalms or the words that may have been sung or our poetry are, are listed, um, printed out as poetry, not just uh, the regular paragraphs that we see. And I wanted uh, to begin uh, by we hear, um, we talked about Mary on the third Sunday, and we hear her saying, singing, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. So many musical renditions of what we call the Magnificat here in chapter one in Luke, uh, anticipating the birth of Christ and who he is to each and every one of us. And then as John is born, the forerunner 
to prepare the way for our Lord. His father um, mouth opened uh, after he was silent for the time of Elizabeth's pregnancy. And we hear him sing, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and he has what? He has redeemed his people. And his song concludes to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. And then on Christmas Eve, just two days ago, we heard the angels singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he has ple is pleased, peace, good will to men. I, it reminds me that my, uh, my parents who were with us yesterday, my mom just spontaneously was talking about how much joy to the world as a hymn meant to her and that it just isn't Christmas till there's been a good rendition. And I assured her that's how every Christmas Eve service uh, ends at Zion. And I also want to take a moment to mention another Christmas Eve service about which I read this morning. Um, and this time I want to lift up the singing of Silent Night, which I also assured my mom is the second to last song we sing every Christmas Eve during the candle lighting. Well, this Christmas Eve in Kentucky, there were two congregations. Their buildings were destroyed by the tornado, so they weren't meeting there. But generators shone lights onto a parking lot where members of both of these congregations gathered outside on Christmas Eve and sang silent night. The witness and hope of the power of song, remembering our Savior's presence among us, even in the midst of destruction and darkness, the ability to have light and music, and the pastors and leaders reminding those gathered that <laughs> the church was there. It wasn't about their buildings, but it was about the literal body of Christ made up of human bodies praying for one another and gathered in prayer and lifting their voices in song to the Lord. And continuing in Luke chapter 2, we get to our lesson today, and Simeon's song, often referred to as the Nunc Dimittis in our church liturgies. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples Again, a light, a light, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. Gentiles and Israel, that means absolutely every body. God bringing light to all people that we may in turn Give him the glory and praise for everything he has done. And that makes us want to sing, makes me want to sing. And so as we go forth today into these coming days of Christmas, feel free to greet everybody with Merry Christmas because it is still Christmas. And... Remember and lift your voices. Make a joyful noise. It does not matter. Um, and actually, I would argue that there's times that 
We internally are singing even if our voices are not heard because there are so many spiritual songs at this time of year that dwell within us from childhood on or even what we've heard in the radio and around us. It's the one time of year that we are very often blessed to hear messages of God's love in Christ outside our church buildings and in our homes, in our, on our car radios. And may the blessing of the message of these pieces of music, ancient and new, which carry the good news, sing in our hearts and uplift us. And may that wonderful glory and light of God made known to us in Christ be reflected and shine and bring hope, light, and joy to all around us in this precious, holy, and festive time of year and always. And may the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.